Hello, I'm Joe Bevilacqua, the President and CEO of the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of the Merrimack Valley Chamber Means Business. I have two very, very special guests today, and I'm sure you'll be informed as to a very, very critical issue that affects each and every one of us. With me is John Albert. John is the President and CEO of the Home Health Foundation. And John, welcome, first of all. Thank you, Joe. I know you have a guest. You'll introduce her shortly. But the Home Health Foundation, tell us what it consists of, John, and what it does and why it's important to the visitors, visitors of Merrimack Valley. Sure. Well, I mean, uh, the uh, agency itself actually is comprised of uh, three separate and distinct companies. One is the VNA. Uh, Two is... Uh, and the VNA stands for what? Visiting Nurse Association. Okay. And that's our home care uh, <coughs> agency. Our hospice uh, is Merrimack Valley Hospice, uh, which, uh, again, is comprised of uh, uh, over 200 uh, uh, clinical individuals. Um, and uh, Home Care, Inc. W is a not-for-profit uh, private duty uh, company that uh, services a wide variety of uh, elder service clients and uh, private pay clients uh, throughout the valley. Now, John, for those who may not know, the Visiting Nurses Association, although you're, you're headquartered in Lawrence, but the reality is that what it does is you place nurses um, in homes, private homes, to mm -hmm. check on the patient for a number of things, correct? Mm -hmm. The, the vast majority of what we do is at home, and we're, whether we're talking about VNA, we're talking about hospice, or we're talking about um, uh, Home Care, Inc., uh, each one of the companies uh, uh, really and truly we're uh, still, uh, or we like to say that we're uh, the health care provider that still makes house calls, um, and uh, uh, that is it, most of all of what we do is really in people's homes. Okay. And before we close the show, we want to make sure you tell people how to reach you by telephone and by website, obviously, or, or email. Now, tell us, I know you're going to have a special guest that's going to tell us about hospice, because obviously you do in-home care, but you also have a, a facility here in Haverhill, correct? That, that is correct. Um, in fact, our uh, one inpatient facility, and in, in Having just said everything we do is at home, we have created uh, really and truly a very special home-like environment uh, here in Haverhill. It's uh, our hospice house. Uh, we ribbon cut uh, back in uh, 2009, the first 14 suites, and uh, we're at in the process right now of coming up on completion of adding the addition to uh, those 14 suites, which will complement uh, the overall with another seven suites and provide us with 21 suite uh, inpatient facility. Well, that's amazing. Why don't you uh, introduce your guest and have her uh, tell us about hospice, correct? Well, we talked a little bit about our clinicians in, in hospice okay. and, and how many uh, uh, you know, wonderful folks we have. Uh, uh, sitting beside me is uh, our medical head, medical leader, uh, medical director for uh, providing all that uh, uh, clinical support and guidance to uh, a wonderful staff, Dr. Joanne Novak. Welcome. Thank you so much Welcome. for inviting us. Um, hospice is unique. Um, of all the healthcare services that are provided, it's different. It, first and foremost, it's important to understand that hospice is not a place, but rather it's a philosophy of care. And it's for patients who are facing the last six months of life that they're faced with a life-limiting illness. And most people think that that life-limiting illness, we think of cancer. But in fact, it can be any disease. Um, we have patients with chronic heart disease, kidney disease, chronic pulmonary disease, numerous medical conditions that ultimately will end in death. Um, and it's a, it's a Medicare benefit. A lot of people have questions, well, who pays for this? And it's a Medicare right and benefit, and Medicare supplies um, this benefit for these patients. So I, getting back to the philosophy of hospice, it's, it's a package of services delivered by a team so that it's not just me as a physician, it's not just the nurses, it encompasses the services of social workers, of chaplains, of home health aides, and uniquely um, it's one of the only, it is the only Medicare service that mandates that 5% of our services are delivered by volunteers so that we have volunteers who
who go into homes, into facilities to be with patients um, at this very crucial uh, time. I, I, I never really understood that it was not just cancer. I thought it was only for, for cancer patients and obviously you, you've, you've enlightened me now and that's why this program is so important because you'll help inform our viewers as well. What I think is important is being able to help the families facing at a very, very difficult time. Isn't it? It's probably the most trying time in someone's life when they're facing um, what they know is not going to be a good outcome for uh, a loved one or, or, or a friend or associate. Um, so it's interesting that you provide the service both in your facility, in the, in the home on off North Avenue, as well as in the patient's home or residence or wherever they happen to be at the point in time that they need the service. You know, we can actually extend hospice services to patients in hospitals. Um, as well as in a home, as well as in skilled nursing centers, uh, in addition to our own house uh, here in Haverhill. That's interesting. But I think the, the point you brought up of supporting the family, we right. think of our unit of care as not just the patient, but as the patient and their caregivers, right. whoever they consider family, um, whether it's their biologic family, their extended family, right. their friends, their neighbors, to help them transition um, during this mm. crucial time. And it's interesting what you said about the volunteers. I, I knew there were a great number of volunteers that were associated with the program. I didn't realize that it was a mandate. But I know there are so many great people in the Merrimack Valley that want to help others. And this is another way in which they can volunteer their time and help yes. provide some assistance during a very, very difficult time for so many people. Yeah, and we have, we have volunteers with all sorts of talents because okay. during our team meeting, we'll be listening for particular needs and we've matched volunteers who, for example, have a quilting project to finish. They, really? They're leaving quilts to their grandchildren before they die. Mm -hmm. And we've, we find someone who sews or someone who may um, transcribe someone's memoir or participate in gardening or mm -hmm. lighthouse keeping. Um, so mm -hmm. we try to find the right match for our patients. Um, so, so they live on mm -hmm. you know, through their project. We also have a unique volunteer service, um, a, a volunteer vigil, such that patients who, for whatever reason, may not have someone around right. as they approach death will just have someone there be there by the bedside right. um, often this is provided in a nursing home facility you know obviously it's a um, we are very appreciative of the fact that you're part of our chamber of commerce and health care and medical care is a growing part of the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, more and more people are becoming involved in that um, and it's obviously a very difficult subject to discuss um, but it's something that people need to know about and know that there are resources available to help them during a very, very difficult time. Well, you know, I always think of it this way. I mean, hospice, uh, uh, if, if the more I understand, frankly, the more I understand uh, right. what uh, Dr. Novak and her team does, uh, the more I realize what a gift uh, it is that uh, people could make av available to, uh, you know, to themselves, to their families. And, uh, and loved ones. Uh, we, and John, we really never, you know, uh, say no. Right. Uh, we ex we're a not-for-profit. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the hospice, uh, Merrimack Valley Hospice, is uh, celebrating its 32nd or 30, coming up on its 33rd uh, birthday, and is oh. the second oldest uh, hospice in the Commonwealth. Um, and so we've been, you know, we've been uh, here. We uh, our roots are really uh, started in uh, Andover, and uh, today we extend to uh, over 100 cities and towns wow. throughout the Merrimack And so Valley. tell us about where, where do the people come from? Where do your, the, the people you provide care to, where are they located? They're located throughout the Merrimack Valley, obviously, and Gabriel beyond, and beyond. And beyond, and beyond. We go as far north at this point as Nashua, New Nashua, Hampshire. Manchester. Uh, Manchester. We are in Maine. We wow. have an as affiliation now with York Hospital and have started a, a satellite hospice in York. So um, we go as far east as the coast, um, as far south into the greater, almost greater Boston area, uh, Woburn, oh, that's Burlington. And obviously I, I can understand why people would, would do that because, you know, although they may come from the, the heart of the Merrimack Valley, uh, for example, Haverhill, Lawrence, or Andover originally, as their families grow and expand, they move out. And obviously they, they need a place to go to that they have mm -hmm. confidence in, 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 in a willingness that they'll be served well during the mm -hmm. difficult time that they're facing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. How do people reach you, John? How, how do they, if, if someone who's watching this show um, wants to learn more about the organization itself and also the different functions that are available, sure. how do they reach you? Sure. 
Well, I mean, we, you can reach us in a, a variety of ways. Uh, the simplest, easiest, really, is just the phone number, which is 978-552-4000. And that will connect them to all? that will connect you to any, any aspect, any part of the agency, uh, and most particularly hospice. Now, um, if somebody wanted to volunteer, if they've watched the show and they've become inspired and they said, I'd like to spend some time helping, do, is it the same phone number they would call? It's the same phone number. Andrea Kairakowski is our director uh, or manager of volunteers, and uh, she's it particularly who runs the program. Okay. Uh, I, I know the, uh, the facility in Haverhill is, is going through an expansion. Uh, is this the first and only expansion, or do you see potentially other expansions coming along the line? Yeah. or? I'd, I'd like to say we, you know, we could expand beyond, but there really are a limited number of uh, licenses available through the Commonwealth. We were fortunate to be, we're currently one of five uh, facilities. There's, uh, the last uh, is the sixth, and that's sort of it for uh, licensure. And, uh, and so, uh, you, you know, what it, in that respect, it sort of makes us unique. I think we'll be hard pressed to think uh, we could go beyond 21 beds at least in so the foreseeable future. So, Doctor, do you future. think? So then, does the um, do you see, in, in, as time goes on, that there'll be growing participation in people's homes or in their, as you mentioned, nursing homes? Or do you see that so growing? What's or? important to know is is most hospice care is given in the home. Um, and it's a supportive service to help families care for them, loved ones. We don't move in, right. um, but we provide nursing services, home health aid, the team, social workers, to help the family do the, the hard but so important work right. of caring for their loved ones. I want to clarify a little bit about what the hospice house is for. Sure. Um, the, the specific licenses are for what's called general inpatient level of care, and it's for a more sophisticated, intensive level of hospice services. For example, um, people may be there who are having particularly difficult pain or breathlessness or nausea that can't be managed in the home so that we have the ability with regular it's staff 24-7 by nurses um, it's physicians are there daily and we have the ability to use equipment and, and other modalities that may not be as easily done in the home. Thank you. Thank you. Now John, let's switch gears and go back to VNA for a second, the visiting nurses, sure. because I think you know many people are familiar with that and obviously you have this huge cadre of nurses that visit um, people throughout the, uh, throughout the region. What are some of the reasons why someone would call the, the VNA? Why, why would someone want to call or need to call you to have um, assistance? Well, I, I, I mean, there's a, a, a wide variety of uh, uh, post-acute discharge uh, uh, reasons uh, that uh, uh, folks would avail themselves of VNA services. Uh, but whether it's IV therapies that you know that need to continue at home, whether it's uh, wound care and wound management, whether it's uh, on the rehab side, orthopedic uh, uh, and uh, surgical uh, sort of recoveries. So um, someone that may be leaving a hospital has some, some follow-through care that needs to be provided and, and obviously the nurse will be able to provide that type of professional assistance that the family member may not be able to do or may not want to do. Correct, correct. And the, there's also a, uh, a number of uh, chronic uh, disease uh, reasons that pe people would avail themselves of VNA service. Uh, there are people with diabetes that need to, you know, have their insulin and be right. cared for. There are folks that are uh, with uh, COPD and they need to have their medicines and medications better managed at home. Or even something as uh, simple as uh, having home health aides come in to uh, assist with groceries, uh, tell cleaning, me, tell us about that. Uh, tell homemaking us about home services. Uh, uh, often we find that uh, uh, f uh, folks, you know, get discharged home and they don't have the right supports uh, necessary to sustain themselves safely at home. Uh, home health aides are, and we, we employ over 200 home health aides, uh, uh, are available to do that through uh, either uh, private duty or through the VNA. That's amazing. And again, the same telephone number to get you? Same phone number. They'll get you there. You know, it's, 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 it's very important, I think, that the people in the Merrimack Valley know this type of service is available. Uh, very, very highly qualified professional services available, and, and I know that you provided a great deal of comfort to a number of people over the years and, and will as we go forward. Um, it's obviously a very difficult time for many people uh, 
Um, and I think it's very, very important that we try to inform the members of the Merrimack Valley community that um, they can have someone available, yes. that there is a resource available. And in many cases, it's funded um, through, how, how, do they, how is it paid for, John? Is it out of someone's pocket or is it through a federal Mo health care program? Most of what or? we do, Joe, most of what we do is uh, really through, uh, uh, probably our largest uh, uh, payer is Medicare. Uh, then there are commercially insured, uh, then there's Medicaid, so there's, there's really a, a wide variety of uh, insurances and uh, uh, coverages, um, and the, the least of, uh, by the way, the, the least of which is not uh, we will provide free care uh, and for, those the, for those that can't and don't have, you know, adequate, uh, adequate coverage. And I know that um, one thing that I know of is that um, so many members of the community have donated to the organization, probably for that very same reason, to be able to provide assistance to those that are in need of care that maybe not have the appropriate insurance or the financial resources Correct. available. Correct. We, uh, you know, solicit the community and, and uh, uh, annually for uh, providing us with funds that help to support and sustain people who, you know, need the financial support. Uh, necessary to be cared for if they don't have that. Uh, also, we're sort of uh, these days too in the midst of a ca not to confuse the two. We're in the midst of a capital campaign, uh, which is uh, you know designed to help support the addition that is going on to our hospice house. John, tell us about um, you know one of the things the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce is concerned about is employment, putting people to work, keeping people employed, and hopefully see them climb the career ladder. Tell us about uh, work opportunities, job opportunities in your organization. I don't mean right this moment, but, but if someone had an interest in being, um, uh, in being considered for employment, what kind of skills would they need or, or what kind of skills would you want them to have or, or licenses or, or education backgrounds? Well, which ones don't we need? <laughs> we, we need them all. Yeah, I mean, we... so from RNs to administrative assistance to we, uh, you know, are in the process of uh, we're hiring more physicians. We have uh, the need for nurse practitioners. Uh, we have uh, the need for RNs, social workers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, home health aides, uh, speech therapists. Uh, you know, most any uh, health profession you can think of. And, and uh, tell we, me, we engage. We tell employ. us again, how many people are in total? work for your organization at any so one we, time? Yeah, so we have, uh, as of a recent count, uh, about 800 wow. employees. So you're one of the largest employees in, in the Merrimack Valley. We are. We're actually, as a freestanding VNA, uh, uh, one of the larger in the country. Oh, that's uh, amazing. We're in the top 10. That's fantastic. And obviously, we have the best here. Your we do have the best. the best. We are, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the ability to handle complex cases, uh, we are really second to none. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, we have uh, a, a absolutely superlative clinical staff and clinical team, um, and most of whom have been with the organization for a considered amount of time. So, John, obviously, I'm still um, the new guy on. The I, I, I believe that, John. Tell us, um, in terms of um, staying on top of medical practices and on the ever-changing world of medicine. You know, obviously, I'm not an, I'm not a medical per person by any means. But um, watching it on TV, the TV shows that are on the news shows, uh, it seems like it's ever changing in terms of medical, and that you need to stay on top of it every minute. Not only is it ever changing, Joe, but it's escalating in terms of the pace of change. And uh, uh, with uh, some of the, uh, you know, the health reform, the Affordable Care Act, is sometimes known as Obamacare, right. yeah. and uh, the uh, uh, sort of variety of different models of care and uh, some of them are models of care some of them are really economically designed models of care uh, with uh, ACOs or some of the health networks that uh, to, to stay on top of uh, my career you know spans 30, 30 some odd years right. well, um, and, and it's it, I've never seen a, a pace of change as dramatic uh, as I have in the last year that has happened over the last 30 years. Well, and, and especially within the field of hospice, I think a lot of your viewers might think that uh, they have a model that is older than 10 years old in mind, which is hand holding and morphine. Right. And medicine has evolved so quickly, such that hospice and palliative care is now a board certified specialty. 
I am board certified. I just passed my boards yet again. Congratulations. Um, and the agency has made the commitment to hire nurses and physicians who are board certified so that we are delivering much more expert care, much more sophisticated, complicated care that didn't even exist 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the difference. There's that's so much great. more that can be done. Well, we're very pleased that you're here today on, on the show. As you know, the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, has created a health and wellness program uh, at the Chamber Trade Shows, uh, which will be offered one in the spring um, and one in the fall. It has a health and wellness component. Uh, we just had as a speaker, uh, President Obama is New England Regional Director for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, as well as over the course of the year, we'll have different um, healthcare professionals coming mm -hmm. to speak to our members because healthcare is so important, not just for the employer, but for the employee and their families. It affects everyone, obviously. We're all concerned about having a good health, and, and obviously these types of services that the VNA provides, hospitals provides, uh, the health aides provide, mm -hmm. is all so important uh, to all of us. And I think it's very, very important that people know that right here in the Merrimack Valley, they have the best of care opportunities available. Thank John, you. before we close, will you repeat the number again? And, and also, is there a website they can go on? Sure. If you go to homehealthfoundation.org, you'll get to our website. Uh, otherwise, our telephone number is 978-552-4000. Okay. Is there any, before we close, anything, any last words that we should pass on to, to uh, the, the viewers or? Um... Well, from at least my hospice perspective, that this service is available, that it's underutilized. Most people uh, come too late to hospice services mm -hmm. within the last one or two weeks. And it doesn't allow for the truly important work of dying, which can only happen after we manage the symptoms, when, when forgiveness, when love, when connection happens. So that to think about it and not be fearful, to know that we're there to help. And John? Well, I would just, uh, I guess sort of a closing thought is that, uh, as Joanne says, we're able to do more and more in the way of uh, complex care uh, at home. Uh, I think with all the health reform that's abounding uh, with, uh, within our community, uh, being able to provide the right care at the right time, at the right price. And knowing that the organization uh, that's is, stayed, here is stayed not only current, but actually is, is well in the future in terms of providing both the, the services, the care, the personnel. Yeah. Uh, not, not too bad for an organization that has been in continued existence since 1895, correct? That's amazing. That's amazing. So. And lo located right here in the Merrimack Valley. One thing we've always said uh, at the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce is that people really don't need to travel to Boston for health care. They have no. it right here in the Merrimack Valley. And it's, it's simple to access as a phone call or Absolutely. check on a website. Uh, uh, if, John, someone wanted to visit the... Uh, Hospice facility in, in Haverhill, uh, are they welcome to go? Do you provide tours we or absolutely. visits? Yep. Yeah, just give us a call, same number, yeah. same and number. we'll arrange a tour um, and have someone yeah. you know, take you through. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we were here because of the fact that I, I think that many people may not have realized, because um, they see the facility here in Haverhill, obviously, that uh, hospice really is a home based facility treatment as well, um, so that you vast can have the vast majority. Most. Yeah. Vast majority, yeah. And um, the home health aides is obviously another great opportunity. Because many, and one thing we do know, John, is that um, many people who, who are single today um, for a number of reasons um, don't have families around them. They may need help when they come out of the hospital. And uh, obviously, uh, you can call upon the home health aide, and they'll do the mm -hmm. necessary errands and so on, as mm -hmm. you, you lack of a better word. And it's good that you also have a tremendous work and relationship with the area hospitals here in the community mm -hmm. of the Merrimack Valley. We have some real uh, sort of budding, uh, we're very excited, you know, in terms of the sort of the regional health networks that are springing up. And we uh, collaborate with our uh, colleagues uh, at the acute care sites, as well as in the skilled nursing centers uh, and uh, medical practices around. Oh, so that's great. Uh, there's lots of collaboration going on these days. That's great. And, and thank you again. I want to say thank you on behalf of the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce for being part of our program today. Dr. Welcome, uh, first time I've thank met you. you. I wish you the very, very best. I've known John for uh, decades, I think it's been uh, uh, from his days here uh, when he was in charge of the hospital here in Haverhill and the good old continued days. on. That's <laughs> absolutely right. A lot less confusing back then, wasn't it, it John? It was a simpler time. Yeah. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a simpler time. And it's just amazing when you think about how far medicine has advanced. You know, it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Fantastic, fantastic well, with technology. I want to say thank you once again. Thank and, you for having and, us. Um, thank you. This has been another edition of the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce Means Business. 
Thank you for watching this show, and please stay tuned for another edition of our Chamber Informative Program. And thank you to our guests. Uh, doctor, thank you very, very thank much. You. John, thank you. Appreciate it greatly.